I was dragging it along the surface, the same thing again. This is big, man. That's possible. I'll, I'll have to guide you and I'll just, you just have yeah. to be very quick with backing off if you need to. No, don't let line go slack. Yeah. Please don't get eaten. This hit this so fast. No, I was winding it in to take some gas out. I was moving it just to take some gas out. And I was splashing it along the surface with the rod down and it just got eaten like full Polaris warp speed. The fish was two meters out of the water and it hit it at full speed from the left. That's not, it's certainly not great. This is bad. Down there. You want to be down on that rock with you? Nah. You stand here. So I don't need to lean over with the line. You'll see him in a second. Yep. We're gonna almost have to slide the gas down while it's out, hey? Yeah. There's the squid. There he is, okay. Ready? Yep, go. Okay, to me. Okay, gentle, 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 back off. I can't see the line, back off, back off. Okay. Back on. Wait up. Yep, back on. Tight. Uh, back off, back off, back off, back off. Yep. Right. Yep, yep, yep. Back off. Back off, back off. I think I've got something. Okay. Yep. Just back off. Holy sh! I don't know where he's gaffed, I have no clue. Yep. Holy f dude, this is heavy. Oh no, don't kick. No, no, no. That's solid. That's very solid. Davy. We did it, boy. We did it. Uh, uh, yep. Well done, bro. Well done. No, no. Oh. Uh, could be of the rope popped it. Yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work, brother. That's a that's a solid fish. Should be 18. I thought it was about 20 when it hit. Okay, let's get this fish up. It might be a bit bigger than 18 actually. He's solid. Oh, nah, he'd be, he'd be 16, 18. That's a beautiful fish, man. That is a absolute beauty. That is what we're after. A big Spanish mackerel off the rocks on balloon. So we just landed this fish. I'll run through how we did this and what technique we use. We got the helium balloon behind us. That's how we got this fish. Awesome, awesome fish. This would probably be somewhere around 18 kilos, I reckon. Ah, it is a solid Spanish mackerel for the rocks. Beautiful fish. Woo! Ah, fuck, that's heavy, I'm gonna put down. <laughs> Dave's just pulled hooks on another fish. So that's two we've had hit and miss and one big one landed. So 
I was walking that back to the car and Dave's rod's gone off. So that's the one we've landed. We've had two hits on the balloon that we haven't hooked up to or pulled hooks on. And we're gonna put out a new bait. So I got a mullet here, I'm gonna chuck it on the rig. I'll get this bait back out and then I'll run through how we do this in detail. Oh, that bait's had a hard time. Far out. Right, cool. Let's get that fish chopped up and in the esky. Um, I'll chuck it in the esky there. We'll go down and help Dave and I can run through how we go about setting up to chase these fish. I got my second setup here. Dave's got a spin combo. I've got the overhead here. So we'll get this fish in the esky and then I can go through and show you how we've gone about doing this and how we got that fish. I'm never gonna get this fish clean. Dave's on again. Jan? Did you watch it eat it? Awesome, man, awesome. You just gotta keep him moving, man. I know it's hard work. Take your time. But also hurry, because sharks. I'm trying, look at him. You can see him out there. You see the silver, did ya? Yeah, I think it's pretty big. Oh yeah, oh no. Free spool, free spool, free spool. Big shark chasing it. Okay, um, one, tighten up now. Hopefully that shark didn't get him. It's behind him. Nah, you gotta go, you gotta charge it now. Don't put too much pressure, but yeah, fight it if you can. Oh no. I don't know if that was a shark or not that I just saw then. Okay, hold him there if you can, because we need these waves to go away. We won't be able to land him here like this. Keep the line tight, but don't fight him if you can. Okay, you're gonna have to try and fight him a bit now and get him to come across the front, hopefully. Okay. When he's in the whitewash and he's very tired, the shark shouldn't be able to find him. Okay, are you right there, man? Yep. Nah, he's coming this way. It's good, it's good. Okay, go back where you were. Because we need him in front here. You right? Yeah, right. This whitewash should have bought us a bit of time. I hope. I hope. Haven't seen him again yet. Okay, there he is. Beautiful Spanish. Right, okay, a little bit more. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay. Gentle, gentle, not super tight, medium. Okay. Oh, he's shaking his head, not good. Yeah, he's surging out with the wave, man. It's all good. I just need him up. A bit this way. Back off, back off, back off. Nah, it's just surging, man. It's hard. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Lift up a bit. Gently. Back off. That missed him. Ah, the surge. It's hard. Okay. A little bit tighter. Okay, back off, back off. Yep. I've got something. I don't know how much of him I've got. He's just swinging. I've only got one hook in him, but I don't know where it is. No, it's it looks like it's through his bottom jaw. Oh no, it looks like we've got him good. Oh. Back. 
was not. Beautiful, David. Yes. Yes. Fish age. Woo. Oh, Dave. Well done, man. Well done. Dave. We made it work, man. I am so sorry. Solid fish on the gas. My first balloon Mackie. Ever. First balloon Mackie. Awesome, dude. I reckon he'd be about 14 kilos, maybe 15. I don't know, but a shark thought he was going to be tasty. Yeah, a shark was going to have a go at him, but managed to get lucky and get him away from it. Second fish of the morning on the gas. Awesome stuff. You. So we just landed Dave's fish. We've got two fish up on the rocks now. We've missed two more. So we're gonna send out another bait. Um, the spin reel that we've been using, the line's touched the rocks a couple of times. So I wanna check it and double check to make sure that everything's perfect before we send it back out again. But I've got the overhead combo ready to go here. The overheads are what most guys use for this kind of fishing. Um, they normally use a seven foot rod and a 30 wide overhead size. Um, mine's a bit different. I've got a custom nine foot rod and a, Solde, a Soltiga LD50 here. So that's got 800 meters of 50 pound braid on it with 24 kilo mono top shot to 150 pound leader. So that's how I set mine up. Most guys just run straight 50 pound braid or 80 pound braid with about 50 to 80 meters of 100 pound leader on top of that just for when the fish is in close so you can control it a bit. So, our setup, it's not super, super complicated. Getting the helium right and the bait sizes right and things like that, there's a few things which I'll run through when we get down there. But for this part, for our rig, I've got four 10 hooks snelled. So the first one is a Flemish eye with a crimp onto the first hook. And then there's three snelled in wire. So. A lot of guys use a lot of different wires. I like to use 49 strand uncoated wire. I find it works really, really well. It doesn't get kinks in it, doesn't snap, holds up really well to the teeth of the mackerel when they hit the baits. So I like to use a 49 strand. The hooks, you want them set out to be about 20 centimeters long because you're gonna be putting on a guardy, a snook, a pike. Um, in our case, we're using whole mullet today. So you're putting on a very big bait that bait needs to be able to have hooks the whole way down it. If you have hooks only halfway down, the mackerel will come through and you'll have one chop the tail off the bait and you won't get hooks in it. So it needs to have hooks the whole way down. So on our wire rig, we've got about a meter of wire. You can go longer, this rig's quite short. It's about a meter all up. Um, normally I run up to about two meters of wire. I've got a plastic squid on there just for a bit of attraction. It also helps to see your bait. If you've got a pink or a white squid and your bait's splashing around five, six, seven hundred meters offshore in the wind, it's really, really hard to see a mullet 700 meters out. It's a lot easier to see a white or a pink squid or something like that. So you can spot your bait much easier to keep an eye on it to see whether it's sitting in the water too much or whether it's up in the air too much. So it really helps to be able to see that bait and to be able to spot it quickly to see if your bait's doing what it's supposed to be doing. That's our rig. A Flemish eye and a crimp to a swivel up the top of the rig there. So the next bit is how we connect our balloon to our line. I run a Lumo bead just to soften where the second, where the second swivel will be hitting on it. So you don't have to run this, this is optional. I just like to do it, just protects that knot so it doesn't get damaged. Then. You've got a swivel sliding on your main line. That's what we're gonna connect our balloon to. When you've got your balloon, it'll be pulling on the Lumo bead like so. So that'll be pulling there. And that bait will be getting bounced around by the balloon. And this balloon will be able to slide up and down your line. You'll see why that's important when we go to launch our bait. Um, you need that balloon sliding up and down your line. It also helps when fighting the fish because the balloon can slide up the line when you're gaffing a fish so you won't get it tangled. And it also can slide up the line when if the fish dives deep so you don't lose your balloon. Most times 
if you hook a fish without it getting sharked, you get your balloon back. Very rarely will you lose a balloon unless you've lost a fish to the sharks or um, you get unlucky with it at some at the cliff and it gets tangled in the cliff gaff or something like that. But generally, you get your balloon back if you land your fish. So that's a, a pretty important thing to have it sliding on your line like that. Cool. That's our rig rundown for our rod and our rigs. Um, we'll chuck a bait on this rig here and then we'll rig up the helium and I'll show you how to do that and we'll send it out and hopefully get one more fish. All right. I'm doing this behind the car because it's so windy. So I'm trying to keep out of the wind so that you guys can actually hear what I'm talking about here. Because if I did this down on the cliff, all you'd hear is wind noise and be terrible. So I'm sorry that it's at the back of the car and that it's really windy, but that's just part of this style of fishing. Wind is what you need. And there is no such thing as too windy, pretty much within reason. But you can, right now it'd be blowing 20, 25 knots and we're still pulling fish out. And it is absolutely howling, which is good. So. We're gonna rig our bait onto our set of hooks. So we're using whole mullet here. A lot of guys will use guardies or pike. Um, they're a favorite bait. I find they're so expensive. They're $25 a kilo. You're looking for baits about four to five per kilo. So you want your baits to be about 200, 250 grams each bait. So this mullet is about 250 grams. It's quite a large bait. Um, if you're using big baits, you're using more helium to keep it on the surface. So if you want to be conscious about how much helium you use, use smaller baits and you'll be able to use smaller balloons because you just need this splashing on the surface. So you can use less helium to keep that bait up on the surface with a smaller bait. So there is such thing as too small though. Don't go using something tiny like a herring. It's very, very hard to get it splashing right. You need something that's got some weight. And if it doesn't have enough weight, it also can get tangled in your line when it flaps around a lot. So we'll rig this on. This is perfect size bait, about 250 gram mullet. We want our last hook to go through the head. These baits are gonna get hammered on the surface, slapped around, dragged. They are gonna get put through hell. So these baits need to be firmly on there and they're not gonna fly off. So the head's the strongest part. That bottom hook needs to go through the head. So that means that last hook's going through the end of the tail there. So first hook all the way through. So with those hooks laid out like that, you're gonna have hooks the whole way down that fish if a mackerel is to hit it. There's nowhere that that mackerel can eat this bait without getting a hook in it or close to it. I like to run hook points facing out. Some guys will just bury the hooks into the bait. Um, mackerel have got sharp teeth and they will cut through, but I like to have the hook points facing out of the bait so that if it does, hit it and doesn't manage to hit it very, very hard, they've got a hook point facing out so they can get hooked very, very easily. You've got one chance when this fish hits this bait because once this bait weighs less and a piece of it's been chopped off, that bait balloon's gonna sail up into the sky and you're never gonna be able to get it back down again. So you've got one chance for this fish to hook up when it hits its bait. To run the hooks with the points facing out, I measure them up. I want the hook point to go through about there so I'll lift the scale up and I'll turn and face it towards the back of the fish and it'll come out like that. So that's the hook point facing out. This rig is a little long for this fish, but that's all right. And then we can do the same with the next one. Turn them, face them out. So that's now three hooks in the fish. And the last one you can see is gonna line up perfectly with the eye pointing down so we'll go through the head, the hardest part of the fish and down. So that is our bait rigged there. So there's a hook, the entire length of that fish. So a mackerel can't hit it on the tail or the head or anywhere in between without it getting hooked, hopefully, if it hits it properly. So that's, that's how I rig it. The squid's here. I like to pull the squid down over the eye of the hook all right, that's our bait rigged here. We've got all of our hooks in our bait. We've got the squid sitting over the top of it. If you're using snook or guardies, the squid sits much nicer over the head and it can sort of sit over the bill or over the nose of the fish. With the mullet, it doesn't sit as nice, but I don't think it really matters too much. Um, this is just a bit of extra attra attraction for the fish to see and also helps you to be able to see your bait when it's out there. So that's our finished rigged bait, ready to go. Let's go rig up this helium and get it out there.
for rigging up our helium, we're gonna be tying it to the swivel on the main line here. There is three things that you need. Three, I can't even do my hands. Three, that one. There is three things that we need. So we need some lighter mono leader. I use 20 pound, 20, 30 pounds fine. Um, if this gets tangled, you want this to snap off so you don't lose your fish. But at the same time, you don't want your balloon snapping off. So don't run lighter than 20 pound because it is very windy and it can break off if you use lighter than 20. So we use our, we've got our light mono leader. We've got our helium balloon. These are 90 centimeter Qualitex latex balloons. That's the balloons that we got. Those ones, they are 90 centimeters, three foot round balloons. They come in various sizes. Make sure they're a quality latex balloon. Um, if you don't use a latex balloon, your helium will fade and you won't get very long out of it. These balloons, you can get two days out of them. The one that I caught my mackerel on, I used that balloon yesterday. So I just checked it, put a little bit more helium in it just to suit today's conditions. And that was it. That balloon was from yesterday, left it pumped up and brought it back out today and caught a fish with it. You got your balloon. After that, you need a little piece of plastic tubing. This is nine mil plastic tubing. Has to be nine mil. I'll show you why in a minute. So I just buy a big lengths of it and chop it down. You're looking at about a 10 mil long piece of nine mil tubing. So what we use that for is we tie a loop in our the end of our lighter leader. So just a simple double overhand there. There's a set of snips. Cut the tag end off. So we've got a loop in our leader. So we're gonna slide our plastic tubing over this loop. So what we're gonna use this plastic tubing for is when we've got this balloon pumped up, we're gonna put the loop over the balloon and that plastic tubing is gonna pull up and it's gonna hold the balloon. So you're gonna have the balloon looped over the loop and then that plastic tubing. So it's quite tight. I normally just wet it so that it can go in there. You pull that balloon through the plastic tubing. So you can imagine when that balloon is pumped up, that's now sealed the end of the balloon. So the benefit of this is that as the wind changes, the day changes, your bait size change, you can now adjust your amount of helium and air in your balloon whenever you want. There's no knots in your balloon. So it's not like, oh, I've got the amount of gas wrong and you have to then change it. This lets you change it whenever you want. So you can pull that plastic tube off and I can then adjust the amount of helium in the balloon to suit the conditions if the day changes, your bait size changes and all those sort of things. Let's go chuck some helium in it and then we'll run through how long we need to have this leader and the things we're looking for when setting the amount of helium in this balloon. All right. So we've got our loop and our little bit of plastic tubing on the uh, mono leader, which is gonna be our balloon line. Got our balloon. This is our tank of helium. There's a few places you can get them. You can get little disposable bottles as well. Um, there's a few things to note. With the disposable bottles, they say balloon gas. It's a lower grade of helium. So they'll say balloon gas instead of actual compressed helium. So the balloon gas is a lower grade helium, which doesn't lift as much. Those little tanks, they uh, you get about three balloons of these, this size out of a small tank and they're quite expensive. This is definitely a better value way to go with the big tanks. Now for us, we can get them from Spotlight um, we also, I've got a BOC account, so we get them from BOC. We've got our E size tank of helium here. This tank is going to get you about 30 to 37 balloons, depending on how big you blow them up, the size of your baits, things like that. So with this gas being quite expensive, running big baits isn't really the best thing. You want to be running smaller baits so you can get more balloons out of the same tank because we're in the middle of absolutely nowhere here. We're a couple of hours from the nearest town. You can't just duck down and go and get some more supplies. It's just not possible. So with this, this is the big tank. This lasts me probably a two week trip. Well, this will be enough for me and one other person for a two week trip easily. So if you're only going for a few days or something like that, you can run the smaller size. 
a very small tank, a C size will get you about five to seven balloons. A D size, which is the next size up, is a bit shorter than this one. They'll get you about 13 to 15 balloons. And then these are the ones to go if you're gonna be doing a long trip and planning on using a lot of balloons. We've got our tank of helium, ready to rig it up onto our balloon line. I chuck the end of the balloon over the nozzle on the tank and it's going to be quite loud. So you can see that balloon starting to blow up. I'll turn this around so it's not pulling on it. There we go. Okay. That's about the size that I think we'll need for today. Um, it's quite windy, so you don't need to use a really big balloon. They blow up nearly double this size. So because it's so windy and our bait's not huge, that's the size we're gonna need. So once again, we'll put our mono leader over our balloon. I'm getting attacked by the balloon here in the wind. Ah. Fold the balloon end over and our plastic tubing up. Wet the balloon. There we go. Ugh. I am getting absolutely attacked by this balloon. There we go. Okay. Hopefully that's a bit. There we go. That's our balloon with the tube on it, and it's attached to our line now. The length of our line depends on a lot of things, but the main rule of thumb is the windier that it is the longer you run this leader the less contact that it has in the bait so it's not moving it around too too much but if the wind's quite light you want this leader to be very short a short leader will be about 10 meters long um, i'd use that on a day where it's borderline too light to balloon um, you run very small baits and about a 10 meter long leader so the balloon is every time the balloon moves in the wind it's going to move the bait but today, because it's quite windy, I'm gonna be running a very long leader, about 50 meters. Just because I don't want that bait to be pulled out of the water. I want it to spend a lot of time in the water or on the surface. So that's about a 50 meter long leader there. I'll wrap it around my hands, give some snips. Oh, don't do that. Got my leader here. I've got to tie that onto that swivel that's sliding up and down my main line. Get in there. This is all much easier to do with someone helping, but I've got Dave filming at the moment. So I'm doing it all on my own and struggling in front of the camera. That's better, thank you. Okay, I'll just use a uni knot just to tie that on. Okay. Cut that tag end, that's it. We are ready to go. Let's go down to the cliff. We're ready to send our bait out now. Um, you hold your bait in one hand. It's easier with a second person. You get them to walk down the cliff a bit and you want to create a big V in your line. So I use the length of the rod and, oops, just caught my plat there. I use the length of the rod and my arm to outstretch to create a V. Because if you just drop it straight off the cliff and there's not a, not a lot of wind, what will happen is your bait will just go down and you drag your balloon down into the, the eddy of the cliff and your balloon won't actually go out. So you want your balloon out, pulling on the line, and then you create a big V. And once you've got that V pretty large, sort of about 50 meters or so, you can throw your bait, hold your line, and you want to point out there, the bait is now sailing out, getting pulled out by the balloon. So the balloon's out, up in the air, and the bait is on the surface, getting dragged out by the balloon. We're sending our bait out at the moment. Now, the things that we're looking for here is we don't want the bait sitting on the surface, like in the water. The bait has to be splashing and dragging on the top. So it's fine if it lifts out of the water, but you don't want it to spend all its time in the air either. So getting the amount of helium right is what will dictate that. So you can play around with the length of your leader and you can um, change the amount of gas in the balloon and that'll change how the bait sits. So you want the bait to be teabagging or splashing on the surface. 
when it's quite windy like this, it's going to drag along the surface as the balloon moves around. So it's one of those trial and error things. You just keep going until you get that bait right. You want it to be splashing and dragging and making as much noise as possible while staying on the surface. So I'm just letting it out at the moment. The balloon's about 150 meters out now. So I just keep my thumb on it just to drag the bait out. We're gonna stop it about 400 meters out today is where we've been getting these fish on the back edge of the reef. If we had a better wind angle, we'd be ballooning out over that way. But with the wind that we've got, it's blowing up along the coast, but there's a reef edge and we're on the back edge of that reef. So hopefully you can see that, but that balloon is up in the sky, way out there. We're about 250, 300 meters out at the moment. So I'll keep letting it out a bit more and you won't be able to see it, but I can see the bait sitting on the surface. I can't see the mullet. All I can see is the white from the uh, squid that's on the top of it. So it definitely helps to see when your bait's out that far. So now that I've got it out that far, I set a decent amount of drag. You can put it in the rod holder. You can hold it, whatever you want. You want that bait to be splashing and dragging across the surface. So I've got the right amount of gas in this. That bait, I can see it, it's splashing, dragging around, creating a good bit of noise on the surface that the mackerel love and they'll come and hopefully have a go at it and we can get another fish. We've got our bait out there. Um, I might put it in the rod holder in a minute, but for landing our fish, we've got a cliff gap. So that's this is what we use. It's got a gap there that you can attach your line to and then three hooks that swing around attached to a rope. So we clip this onto the line, slide it down the line, and we gaff the fish holding onto the rope on the other end. So this cliff that we're fishing off at the moment is very high. We're fishing off a cliff that's over, I think that's a 25 meter rope, and I've got about two meters left in my hand when I'm at the fish at the water. It's a, it's a very tall cliff, so with this style of fishing, it's not catch and release fishing. The fish, this is just fishing to catch mackerel for food. So it's a very effective way of fishing. I much prefer to catch them on spin off low ledges, but if you don't have perfect water or the swell's too big or it's just not right conditions for spinning, this is the way to go. Ballooning out baits, you're gonna get some fish if you put, put in the effort and get the right wind. So, it's a really, really effective way of fishing. I've got the rod sitting in the rod holder. Balloon's way out over there along the back of the reef. I'd like it to be out a bit further in the deeper water, but it's along the back edge of the reef. So we pulled a mac. One of the mackerel came from in there. So who knows? We might get another go. If this wind changes, we'll have to pack up and that'll be it for today. But we still had a good session this morning and got two really, really good fish. So Rod's in the holder, just waiting for that fish to come through and eat that bait that's splashing on the surface and creating a heap of noise. Well, we're gonna pack it up now, call it quits. Um, the wind has changed direction and the balloon is now, instead of it sitting offshore, the balloon is now sitting right in over there. So, haven't had any more hits. Um, it's gone a bit quiet. We've got a long drive home, but we're gonna reel it in. Wind's not quite the right direction anymore, but still got a couple of good fish, and I may finally been able to run through how we go about doing this style of fishing and how we use it to catch mackerel off the big cliffs. So, certainly work for a lot more fish than just mackerel, so if you do wanna try it for other fish, I've used it for um, uh, Samson fish on the south coast. Guys do get cobia, tuna, sailfish, marlin, all off these cliffs doing this stuff as well. So it's got a pretty wide range of uses. You just need an offshore wind from wherever you're fishing and you can give it a go for some bigger fish. Pretty effective method really. It's just like, the easiest way to describe it is basically like trawling around a skip bait on the surface or, or a popper that's forever working. It's, it's pretty cool to watch when the fish do hit it. If there's anything else that I've missed and you've got any other questions, chuck them in the comments below and I'll be able to answer them. 
Been trying to make this video for quite a while now, so it's good to finally get it done and to get a couple of good fish. So we've ended up with two really nice fish for the morning's effort. And hopefully I've been able to answer any of the questions that I've been getting for the last year since the last video that I've made about this style of fishing. So yeah, helium ballooning for mackerel, awesome fun. Thanks for watching guys.